Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the unique transparent vintage kit, the 1997 Dale Earnhardt NASCAR No. 3 Monte Carlo from Ravel in 125th scale. It's model kit number 85-4131. This kit uh, is still available and can be found online sites and local hobby shops. And as I said, it's 125th scale, and it's based on the old skill level 2 for ages 10 and over. The kit contains 92 clear parts, and the only thing being black uh, are the tires. The decals are silk screen water type, and the instruction sheet's typical book format. Now the motor is well detailed and looks nice when finished. The chassis fit is tight, and all the parts line up and go together correctly. There's no interior per se, just the seat and the roll cage that builds into the interior's frame. The body was blemish free and the only thing that was shows off are the front fascia and the uh, stickers and the hood and the fascia both are separate. The build up is straightforward and builds quickly and the finished dimensions are length 8 and 3 8 inches, width 3 and an eighth inches and height 2 and 3 8 inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction on this kit, we're going to use some white glue or clear part cement uh, as opposed to a styrene glue. Uh, to make sure that the plastic doesn't start hazing. There are some places like suspension points where you could use uh, regular tube glue for uh, strength, but for the most part, we'll be sticking to white glue. Here's my version of an open box review. I could pick all the pieces up and name them and tell you that yes, in fact, they are in the box, but I'm just going to let you look at them all and you can get your entire open box review in about 15 seconds. Now we'll pull out the parts to build the motor for this kit. Uh, and I elected to paint the motor to give it some kind of um, uh, visibility there. Uh, but you can leave it clear just as the rest of the model. Um, now assemble the block, the heads, the valve covers, and the breather, the oil pan, the intake, the carb, the heat shields, and paint that unit aluminum. The air cleaner is aluminum with a white filter, and the headers are assembled and then painted steel color. The alternator and power steering pump are aluminum, and the belts are rubber color, color with steel and aluminum pulleys. Now, I didn't use the uh, kit's distributor uh, in favor of putting one of my own wired distributors in place, so assemble the parts onto the motor. If you want to add a pre-wired distributor uh, and coil for your build, simply uh, drill out the uh, hole where the distributor uh, was mounted before, and then uh, add your pre-wired unit uh, to that hole, then um, cut some small parts of black wire for the boots and slide them onto each wire, and then match up the wires with a wiring diagram you can find on the internet. Slide each wire into place where the spark plug holes would be, and then super glue all the wires into place. Now get out the parts to assemble the chassis and the upper A arms, and assemble those, and then add the pedals to the firewall and attach that too. Now we'll attach the passenger side uh, roll cage and add the rear wall with the fire extinguisher. Then install the steering shaft from the firewall to the frame. Add the shifter uh, stiffener brace and the seat and then add the driver's cage wall. Continuing on with the cage, uh, we'll add these parts uh, starting with the stiffener brace and install that. Then add the petty bar and all four hoses. Install the mirror to the top brace and install the top brace with the top stiffener. Then install the fuel cell, kicker bar, and rear shelf. Now grab these parts to install the oiler tank and the shocks. Add the springs to the rear arm. Assemble the rear axle with the coolant pump and the belt. Then install the axle onto the arm and install the arm unit onto the chassis. Now install the motor to the frame 
and simultaneously install the drive shaft to the transmission and to the rear end. And then add the exhaust to the headers. Now on the top side add the frame braces to the firewall and the frame. Now we'll assemble the dash. The steering wheel and the column is assembled and added to the dash and then install that to the interior and add the pillar braces. Gather these parts and assemble the fan to the radiator and add that to the chassis installing the hoses to the motor. Then add the front shocks and the lower front suspension. Moving on to the wheels, I decided to give the um, tires uh, kind of a used look to make them look more authentic. So I just pressed and rolled the tread area on a sheet of fine sandpaper. Then insert a rim front and a rim back into each tire and do all four. Now press the tires and uh, wheels carefully onto the hubs until you hear a snap as they are seated. They're non-directional so they can go on any axle. Now you'll have a rolling chassis to finish the car off with and you can see the motor uh, is painted and it just kind of jumps out at you as a nice display to contrast the clear body and other parts. It's a little different putting together parts together that are all clear you have to double check your orientation. Now the body only needs the front fascia installed so you can do that now and then add the hood. And remember use some clear glue for this especially around the body areas to keep this uh, the parts from hazing. Now pull the windows out for installation and remember to continue using some uh, white glue or some clear model parts cement to put those into place in the body. Now we can decal the kit and you're going to need to use plenty of warm water and I strongly recommend using some decal solution uh, because these are pretty large and they need some setting solutions to help them contour to the body and stick well. Now that the decals have been placed and are dry you can install the body onto the chassis. Just slide it into place. The only parts that you should have left over are some extra decals for the tires uh, if you didn't use those and the distributor if you added a pre-wired distributor as I did in this case but it's pretty much a single purpose model and it's built just as it is because of the way it was. Well there you have it and I know that the Intimidator would have approved of this kit because of his relentless pursuit of precision. Everything went together very well in this kit. The Tampo printed tires are a refreshing reflection of what used to be in all model car kits. But back in the 90s of course NASCAR was king and the king of kings was the Intimidator himself, number three Dale Earnhardt. Now for this time period this kit is made to exacting specifications. The decals were excellent and no issues were found with warpage or, or fit even after all these years. They fit uh, well together even uh, and had no flash. Uh, because this was a clear body kit there weren't really any mold lines to speak of either. And the decals uh, went on well and they are very nicely done. Now I would not expect uh, you to uh, just put this together quickly because it actually takes a little extra time for the white glue to set up. But once you've finished it, wow, it's a real showstopper. You can put this on your display shelf along with the rest of your NASCAR cars and really feel proud, especially with the uh, number three showing right there on top. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.rightonreplicas.com Thanks!